Okay, so we're gonna talk about cool and warm colors. So I'm just gonna go over what that means really quick again before we get into cool and warm versions of cool and warm colors. So the warm colors are the colors of fire, is what I always tell people because it's easy to, to remember. So yellow, orange, and red are the warm colors. And then green and blue are the cool colors. Violet, which is purple, and blue violet are cool colors. Red violet is a warm color. So we split purple or violet up. And that is a little bit confusing. So red violet is warm and blue violet is cool. Regular purple or violet is cool. Okay. And so yellow green is considered a cool color. Okay. So that being said, even the cool colors have warm and cool versions. Even the warm colors have warm and cool versions. And what does that mean and how do we know? And why do we need to know? In a painting or a piece of artwork, cool colors recede or go back in the picture and warm colors come forward. So even in an abstract painting, if you're trying to um, create volume or distance or a push and a pull, you can use that to your advantage. So the cool colors going back and the warm colors coming forward. Um, and if you're making a monochromatic painting or using mostly all of one color and just a little bit of another, you can use warm and cool versions of that one color. Okay, so that's, that's how, you know, that's all good stuff to know. So if you're new to painting, it gets very confusing and you may not understand how to know the difference or which, um, say if we were talking about blue, which blues to pick. So we're always going to know that if we're picking a primary color, like primary scion or primary blue, is the blue right, right in the middle of any kind of primary would be right in the middle of that um, value range, right in the middle of the hues as far as warm and cool and primary um, yellow is going to be right in the middle neither warm nor cool it's going to be right in the very center of that not trending toward warm or warm or cool it's going to be the you know it's a yeah it's a warm color yellow but it's going to be right in the middle of that and the same thing for red um, red is normally it'll be primary red or primary magenta and it's going to be right in the middle of things, right? It's not going to be either a very, very warm red or a very, very cool red. It'll be right in the middle. Now, um, when we're talking about our earth tones, like um, red oxide, red, yellow ochre, yellow oxide, red oxide, raw sienna, burnt umber, burnt sienna, all the earth tones, they are always warm. None of the earth tones that we use normally in painting are cool. So those are always warm colors. So that's that's really easy to remember. So um, you can always remember that all the oxides and burnt sienna, raw sienna, burnt umber, all of those, um, yellow ochre, which is also sometimes called yellow oxide, those are all warm. Going by um, colors now, let's talk about red and we'll do some swatching. So I have my watercolors out today and let me just grab a brush here and I'm gonna just paint on um, my palette here. All right. Now, 
I'm going to first paint a very, very cool red. So what does that mean on my color wheel? On my color wheel, when I pick out a cool red, instead of it being in the middle, it's going to be the one closest to violet. So I'm picking alizarin crimson. Alizarin crimson, without me adding anything to it, is almost red violet. Okay. Now I'm going to grab my warmest red, which is um, cadmium red. And cadmium red is almost orange. Okay. And that's the one that's almost red orange and it's right here. So they're very far apart. Okay. That's the warmest one and the coolest one side by side. Okay. And now I'm going to show you my, let me see, my very coolest blue, which I think is this one. I'll make sure I think this is it. My coolest blue. My warmest blue, so that's the coolest one. That's like a phthalo blue. And this is my warmest blue. Now the coolest one, the coolest blue is almost blue green, phthalo blue. And the warmest blue is ultramarine blue and it's almost blue violet. So now, if I were to take, and I wanna show you something. If I were to take the blue that's almost blue green and the red that was almost red orange, I practically have complementary colors. So if I were to mix those together, I wouldn't get a beautiful purple because I'd, I'd almost have complementary colors. So I'm gonna do that here and swatch that up. I'm gonna take cadmium red. I'm gonna take cadmium red and I'm gonna take my phthalo blue and I'm gonna mix them. And I'm gonna not get a beautiful purple. I'm gonna get kind of a yucky color that's like a dark gray because I'm mixing almost like compliments here. Let me just get a little bit more of this here to show you. But if I were to take the red that's almost violet And the blue that's almost violet. Where is she? That's this one. I mix them together. I get the most luscious purple. Really deep, rich, gorgeous purple. Okay. And that's why we kind of need to know Okay, now, when we're talking about yellows, the coolest yellows, the ones that are closest to green, are the lemon yellows. And this is a very, very cool, this is a very cool yellow. Bismuth yellow is also another color that's very, very cool. 
And then the warmer ones are always our cadmiums. And here we are with a beautiful, warm, creamy cadmium. Also Naples yellow is a very warm yellow. So in general, cadmium, um, cadmium yellows, cadmium reds, those are very warm colors. When we're talking about grays, um, neutral grays that are neither um, cooled nor warm are available in a lot of paint colors. So you'll see things like, uh, they will be actually called neutral gray and they'll come in different shades, either a light shade or um, a darker shade of neutral gray. Payne's gray is a very commonly used color in watercolor and in acrylic paint. And that color is a very cool color. It's almost a blue color. It's a very beautiful color of paint. And that's a cool gray. But there are neutral grays, which are a balance between white and black. And they come in different values. So either, you know, a, a difference between light and dark. But they are very neutral grays. And they're also really nice to have on your palette. Um, so let's go over some of the other um, names of colors that would be um, available. So... Um, primary magenta is just a, a neutral um, in the middle color. Primary yellow is in the middle and that's a neutral yellow. Um, in greens, um, chrome green and permanent green are both kind of middle of the road greens. Phthalo green is very cool. Um, a lot of artists prefer to mix their own greens from blues and yellows and yellows and blacks. So if you mix yellow with the different colors of black, like Mars black or carbon black and yellow, you can come up with some gorgeous greens. Um, the phthalos are very cool. So uh, mixing phthalo uh, green or phthalo blue with yellow will create beautiful um, greens. Manganese blue is a very cool blue. Cerulean blue is a very cool blue. Um, cobalt blue and ultramarine blue are very warm blues, very close to red. So those would make gorgeous purples. In yellow, um, warm yellows would be Naples yellow, cadmium yellow, derelied yellow, um, azo yellow, and cool yellows would be bismuth yellow and lemon yellow. And like I said, all the earth tones are always warm. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about, and... Um, these are really fun to do. Um, are are complementary colors and mixing them to create beautiful neutrals. So I'm just gonna do one set, but they're real these are really fun to do in your sketchbook. So today I'm just going to do um, a quick sketch. I have a little seashell here. That I'm going to just paint really quickly and I'm just going to do a quick sketch of this in my um, in this box and now this box was just drawn quickly with um, with a jewel case from a CD okay and what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the inside of this with um, with blue and just I'm going to do this in watercolor. This is cerulean blue, which is a very um, cool blue.
and I'm going to use my I'm going to use my complementary colors on this project. And then I'm going to do some swatching next door where we're going to combine the complementary colors. I'm going to take another version of blue. I'm going to take the um like a cool blue and I'm going to paint inside here. So you can see the cool blue next to the um I mean the warm blue next to the cool blue here. So I'm going to take this is like an ultramarine blue. So I'm not trying to I'm trying not to blend these. So I'm kind of intentionally not touching them. doing a little shell. So if you don't like to draw, you can do like a shape in the middle of yours. I just always like to do some kind of a shape. So the complementary color to blue is orange. So I'm going to go for a cadmium orange on the and I'm going to I'm going to paint my box orange. Now, I don't want these to mix. So I'm going to leave a little bit of a white edge all around this. Because I this is a little bit wet in the middle still. And then I'm going to swatch some neutrals using those three colors. So when we put complements next to each other, we say that they sing because they're very dynamic and beautiful when we put them next to each other. They stand out and they look amazing because one vibrates against the next. But when we mix them together, they cancel each other out. So I'm mixing. I'm mixing here on a porcelain pan. So I'm going to take my bright orange and this is the ultramarine blue and you can see I'm getting a gorgeous gray, neutral gray. And I'm going to paint a little bit of a swatch here in that neutral gray that I mixed from those two colors. And here I go again. And you can mix a bunch of um, neutrals from that combination. If you want them warmer, you can add more orange and you'll get more, um, more of a warm color. If you want it cooler, you can add more blue to the mix. And if you want it more intense, you just add more pigment to to both to make it darker and more pigmented and you'll get almost like a black color. And you can get a, a lot of variation. Um, what people like to do um, is instead of using um, black out of the tube, a lot of artists will create their own darks and neutral colors using complements that are already in their painting um, to create these rich darks and neutrals using uh, complementary colors that they're already using in their paintings. And they automatically um, go in your painting because those colors are already there. So that's using the ultramarine blue. And now I'm going to go in and mix that um, using the orange color and the cerulean blue. It's going to be slightly different because it's a different pair of complementary colors. All right, so this one is going to be a little different. And this color is not as intense, so I'm going to need more blue.
So you can mix these for all of the complementary colors. Now, we always think of blue and green, um, blue and orange, violet and yellow, and red and green. But any two colors that are opposite on the color wheel are complementary. So you can make as many of these as you want and swatch away um, new, uh, making neutrals um, and do this project. And remember, you don't have to draw something in the center. You could put a, a square or a circle or a diamond in there instead if you don't wanna um, draw an object. And this is a really fun sketchbook project. And you can swatch beautiful neutrals in the center. Um, a lot of times uh, when I was a young artist, I had a lot of uh, instructors that would yell across the room, you're making mud, you're making mud, but they never ever explained to us why we were making mud, what caused the mud, how we created mud, and what they actually meant was that we accidentally mixed two complementary colors together. Um, they never explained this, um, so we had no idea like how we were like actually doing this by accident. So I like to show my students that if you mix these by accident, you will create neutrals, but if you do it intentionally, you'll create these gorgeous neutral colors, you can create darks. Um, and, you know, we should, this is something we should learn to do. And um, it can be really gorgeous when we do it on purpose. Um, creating neutrals by mixing complements is, is amazing. And so the other thing that it's really a good thing to know about complements and mixing them with each other is that if you have a color that's very, very intense, like say we were using this red and you were like, wow, that's a beautiful red, but I just, I, I don't want it to be so intense. You could just take a little tiny bit of the complementary color, mix it in until you're satisfied and it will, it will knock it back just a hair. Um, so you can, you can mix in that complement a little bit and then you will get a slightly different, not as intense color. And you can do that with any of the colors that you're using. So if you were using blue, you would just put a, a dab of orange in um, and you just mix your complements until until it's less intense. So you can take your colors back just a hair by doing that. You change the chroma. So there's some tips. If you have any questions, please pop them into the comments section below and I'd be happy to answer them for you.